Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. This video is a follow-up to my last one about the Oculus Quest 2 and whether or not touch controllers are a viable option. The last video got an absolutely amazing response, over 30,000 views and counting at the making of this one. So thank you all so very much for watching. If you do want to subscribe and help the channel grow, thank you very much. Please click on that button. So for this video, um, I thought I'd follow up and cover the touch controls because I didn't really cover it in the last one because... I'm going to be honest, I don't like using them. It's not that I can't use them, it's just that I prefer using a HOTAS. Now, for some people, that's not an option. They either can't afford a HOTAS because the prices have skyrocketed this year, or they travel a lot and they take a gaming laptop and VR headset. Now, that's fine. I completely understand. I'm not saying you need to have one because you don't. However, I will say for me, the feeling is better and I'll cover why over the next few little clips as I tank with a HOTAS, I tank with touch, I fly a helicopter in HOTAS and a helicopter with touch. Not every module in DCS World can fully use the touch controllers, so for example the F14 you cannot currently use the touch controllers nor the Harrier. However, uh, you can for things like the 18, the 16, and the Huey and stuff like that. So there are some modules there that you cannot fully utilize touch. So just make sure before you buy, you actually check to make sure you can use touch controllers with it if that's what your intention is. The footage that you've been watching in the background is me flying around using my HOTAS. Uh, and I've actually recorded this whole video in VR. Um, I've used the Oculus Mirror, uh, left eye and stabilization. I'll include a screenshot towards the end of the video with my VR settings as well. It's not a great system I have, but it's good enough to run the Quest 2. The touch controls themselves are tracked very accurately in the Quest 2. And for things like Onward or Super Hot or Job Simulator, something like that, they are outstanding. However, I don't enjoy using them in DCS. It's a personal preference, but you can use them and be effective. There are people out there who've been using them for ages and they will be phenomenal at it. I'm not denying that for one second. What I am saying is if you do have a HOTAS, it's probably more preferable to use the HOTAS because it feels more natural. There's no feedback on a touch controller as to what you're doing. There were some comments um, made that I didn't know what I was talking about or I couldn't make the comparison about touch and HOTAS because I couldn't use the touch controllers or I had to prove myself essentially. So in this video, I aim to do that. I tank using the touch controllers and I fly around in a Huey. A Huey? A Huey. It's not too difficult. It'll take practice, I'm sure, if you do it and if, if you only had touch controllers, it'd be fine. And it is a viable option. I'm not saying it's not. I just don't like it. If it's all you have and it's all you do, then you have a great time. But for me, not as intuitive. So here is the footage of me attempting to put my money where my mouth is, so to speak. You'll see me flying towards the tanker. Uh, I've got my comm menu ready, so ready for your contact. I was too far away. Now, I had to lean over to the keyboard and bring the comm menu up because I hadn't bound a comm button to any of the touch controllers. Space there is at a premium for anything you want to bind to it. So having a comm menu at the time wasn't a priority. And I realised trying to tank, it is a priority because having to take my hand off the stick to then click a keyboard to then put the hand back on the stick, it was overly complicated for me. I could have made it easier for myself, but I didn't. Again, with my HOTAS, that's all bound on buttons, so I don't need to take my hands off the throttle and stick. Whereas with the touch control, it was a little bit more difficult. That's why you're going to see me flailing around behind the tanker uh, while I'm trying to work the comms, because I pull too hard, or I'm pushing, or I'm clicking the wrong button, because I'm not used to it. Ready so, ready pre-contact again. There we go. So, he's got the basket out. I've got my probe out. I can actually concentrate on getting into the basket. Now, this is my first attempt at refueling in the F-18. So, I'm just getting the feel for pulling up. See how much pressure I need to give the stick. 
and it's not that much as it turns out. And that's the problem I have. There's no pressure when I'm pulling on touch controller. I don't know how hard that hand in the cockpit, the sort of ghost hand, I don't know how hard that's pulling back. Whereas with a HOTAS, I know exactly how hard I'm pulling back because I can feel it in the resistance on the stick. So I begin to crab up slowly. I'm trying to figure out the throttle. I'm working it towards the little blue cross you can see is that was there the whole time. I think that's a setting I've got in VR uh, when I use the touch controllers so I can easily click a menu or something. I don't know what it was. It was quite distracting. I'm not going to lie. So I'm flying towards the tanker, just checking uh, that I've got everything ready. So I've got a little bit of overtake, 320 knots. He's doing about 314. I haven't bound a speed brake button, so I'm wary that I don't want to overrun the tanker. So I'm trying to do a nice gentle approach. My head's moving round, it does in VR. I've tried to smooth the view as much as I can. So this is the first attempt. It's gonna be a quick in and out. And that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, most people do that when they tank for the first time using a HOTAS. A lot of people find it difficult. Um, I've seen we got tanking down with my HOTAS. So I'm approaching, I'm a little bit too fast, which is why I go pop in and then I lose a bit of awareness where my actual right hand was for the pitch and I drop out the basket. So I'll go back a bit and try again like you would using any other stick. So drive forward, drive forward, a little bit up, drive forward again, and then we're gonna go blunk into the basket. And this time we stay in and we take fuel. So that was easy enough for the first time. Next up, the Huey. At the start of the clip for the Huey, you're going to see lots of faffing around. Um, that's because I'm trying to get rid of the uh, co-pilot status and the controls indicator because I don't like flying with them on. And also, where my chair is sat, because obviously I've got my normal HOTAS center mounted with my Monster Tech stuff, it's all in the way. So I'm faffing around trying to find a comfortable position where I can reach down and grab the collective. Now, speaking of the collective, I agree that a throttle control on a HOTAS doesn't really simulate a collective. It's a, it's a workaround that we have. Um, there are, I, I believe there's a company making a collective and it'll be fantastic and I'll be buying one because I'd love it. VR with a proper collective is amazing. Now, putting your hand down there feels natural in the touch control, so your hand's like on where the collective would be. But again, because there's no pressure when you're pulling up, it's a bit, false um, you'll see me um, having a few bits where I dip down dip up and again because this is my first time trying it it's muscle memory because in my uh, throttle in the HOTAS if I pull towards myself uh, that's me reducing the power whereas in the collective of course you pull you're gonna go up because you're pulling pitch um, so yeah, you'll see a couple of dips, but again, it's not difficult to fly. The touch controllers are entirely a viable option for flying in DCS, but again, I just prefer the HOTAS. <laughs> I can't say that enough. I've said about 18 times, but if you only have uh, the touch uh, or the Oculus Quest 2 and touch controllers, you will enjoy DCS. You'll have a great time. It'll be difficult to get to grips with initially, but you will have a great time. In conclusion, the Oculus Quest 2 touch controls for DCS are indeed a viable option to use. However, if you have a HOTAS, you're probably gonna to stick to that. The learning curve with the touch controllers uh, will be quite steep, I'd imagine. That lack of feedback as to pushing or pulling the stick is gonna cause your brain to have a little bit of confusion initially. But again, if it's all you know uh, when you're playing DCS, then you'll have a mega time. I hope this has helped answer a few questions. Um, I certainly don't try to mislead people with the videos. If I have, again, send me a message. I'll try and clarify anything that I do say. So that's it. The touch controllers for DCS World. Until next time, Tactical Pascal, out!